Jason Cornell from J&J Truck Bodies and Trailers, Somerset, Pennsylvania, here at the Allison Transmission Facility in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, we're here at the test track, ride and drive. Uh, we're going to drive some trucks today, show you around, uh, show you the 40 ton dump, also show you a couple uh, aluminum dump bodies as well that we manufactured and partnered with both Allison and Western Star uh, to kind of dress up the fleet here at the ride and drive facility. So, also do a uh, stockpile box which is a little different design uh, and it'll take uh, the material a little bit different way. Uh, again, very heavy duty front end, slipper springs. This one hasn't got the skid pad and it's just got a stock factory skid pan on it. Uh, Donna clone air cleaners. This one has steel fuel tanks so you can put steel fuel tanks on here. You can also put on uh, Wiggins fast fill tanks, so some guys like to fill their fuel fast pressurized, you can, we can get those as well at the plant. J&J Box has a subframe on top of the, the structure, and then they have a, a dump guide as well, so that keeps the box from tipping when it's up in the air and it saves the cylinder wear at the top. You can also make these heated if you want, so with a tier 3 engine, you can run the heat into the box. You guys don't need to worry about that as much. Guys in Alaska, they like that option. Again, Chalmer suspension, axle tech axles. This one, uh, you can clearly see the, the quad rail at the back, so very heavy duty. This one has a push bumper as well. A lot of times these guys will get nudged by cats. This one had the, uh, we do two different fuel or lube options on the J and J. We can do a central lube at the back, and we can do uh, a auto lube. Or some customers I've run into actually want the lube points left alone, and they make their guys check the truck out as they go around and do their lube. So that's their truck check every night, and they said they weren't interested in this because they want them to crawl around the truck. So it all depends on how the customer wants it, but we can do it any way they need it. So big mines that want, uh, they're in a lot of mud and applications, they're not gonna be able to get at the grease points. This is a very nice option. The Chalmers, you can see it's a, it's a combination walking beam uh, <coughs> with some torque rods. So that gives you a lot of stability in that suspension. Uh, the, the biggest uh, wear point on these things is bushing wear. So. They're all rubber though. Yeah. They're very heavy. Thing, as long as you keep the torque on, they're usually pretty good. Again, it's all in that. There's a service manual for this truck as well. So you can go through and check the service manual for the, uh, the Dynamo. Any of these demo units that we're putting together, I'm building a full service manual with them. And they're actually great sales tools. As you walk through with the customer through the service manual, you can actually sell the truck with it as well. This one has a uh, boat rigger. We can actually put rock uh, pickers on both if we want. It just knocks the rocks out if they do get in the tires. Most places that go in gravel pits don't really usually use that, but if it's in a rock quarry or something where there's sharp rocks, you want to kick them out before they slice the tire. This one has a uh, grown build auto lube on it. So all you do do is weekly check the grease level and it continually pumps grease into all the joints on the truck. The only thing it doesn't grease is the drive line. You got your under cap breather on this one as well. Uh, hydraulic tape. Handrails again, very important for these guys. Even the, the small gravel pits and quarries like the handrails. It's, it's a safe unit. It doesn't affect their visibility. That's one thing. When you get in the truck, have a look around. This, this looks like it would wreck your visibility, but it doesn't bother it at all. And it's just, it's night and day. 
for getting up for access in the truck. This one has a, uh, they both have actually, a top mounted rad condenser. So what that does is it keeps the rad condenser off the, the radiator and allows it full um, cooling. So we're not taken away with our rad condenser up top. And it also keeps it up out of the dust so it gets better air conditioning. Yeah. And then we do the double bumper. This is always a good option uh, for the mines. It gives you a nice step. It also allows you to put a better skid pan right to the uh, slippered springs so Carco can actually beat these up. It makes a complete box section. It's very tough to, to bother that front end when you box it up like that. So that's the 40 ton dump. Fenders again, six bolts. Uh, and it in a plug, you essentially take that whole fender completely off with the handrails and everything. It's about 15 to 20 minutes to get at the whole side of the engine. So, very easy access. Butterfly hood, all the pieces are independent, so there is nothing to crack over time. Uh, we haven't had any warranty issues with the butterfly hood for that reason alone. You can see the shock mounts on the rad. So the rad is all frame mounted and then shock mounted as well. So this copper core rad uh, stays very stable in there. And also if it does get a hole poked in it, you can solder it up without removing the rad. So very important on a big mindset. things we've designed into this box that most of the other guys wouldn't. One, uh, the spring mount in the front. That's allow for flex in the chassis. Uh, integrated subframe into this thing. The auto gate arms, uh, it's easier to tie into that just because of the whole suspension side of things. You're able to tie into this uh, subframe. Uh, we have dual safety props on both sides, flip up. Um, basically one guy can flip them, let the body down. Um, Single, uh, just single acting front mount, telescopic uh, hoist cylinder up here. Nothing special, a typical dump body setup. However, uh, because of the speed requirements in off-road application, we actually put an unloader valve here in the front. Um, so they're actually dropping that oil out of there quicker. We're 18 seconds up and 16 seconds down. Um, for a piece of equipment uh, this size, we're very competitive with the other off-road guys. Uh, we have the underbody stabilizer in here as well, uh, allowed us to stay smaller with the cylinder size and just use it for a thrust. All the side loads are, are handled with the stabilizer in the middle. Uh, some of the other items, the rear hinge pin, it's a three inch rear hinge pin, uh, extremely heavy duty. Uh, through there it's a four inch uh, OD tubing that goes across there as well. Rock ejectors we have in here, uh, picking up any boulders on the road or anything. Um, it'll obviously kick them out instead of staining the tires and shooting them up to the cab. Uh, we have a uh, bumper here on the back, whether it's a push bumper if they get stuck. Um, it's also hinged. And then uh, probably the last thing to point out on this is you can look at all the grease points um, in this whole body. And after I set the body back, back down, you'll be able to see the manifold in the back plate. Every single point on here, the stabilizers, uh, the top cylinder mount, everything is greased, uh, tied into that growing well, uh, automatic grease system on the other side. So. Rumi cab in the Western Star 40 ton dump, here we are on the inside. Uh, we can do cameras. This one has an Allison retarder in it. So this is a six pi uh, position retarder. Uh, works when the truck is on full um, drive and retards down to about 1100 RPM. Uh, very nice open dash in the Western Star. Uh, lots of room for controls in between the seats. Uh, lots of room for passengers uh, with the, uh, the in-cab battery box. So we can fit three people in here very comfortably. Uh, the cab is very quiet as we get going. 
uh, you'll notice that the, the noise is very limited and the truck is very easy to drive. So easy to train operators um, and easy to keep the dry, uh, operator happy when you are uh, on the road. bouncy when it's unloaded, but uh, we've got a pretty big spring pack up front, so it's understandable. Uh, when you put a load on it, it's very uh, smooth riding truck. We're coming up to the off-road hill. This is a 25% uh, grade. Notice the engine retarder coming on there. This truck has both an engine retarder and a transmission retarder. So the transmission retarder would be used for when the truck is loaded um, and the engine retarder as well. So 25% grade. As you can see with the Allison, it just climbs up these hills. And your engine retarder. So very good visibility in the truck. As you can see, that engine brake is doing most of the braking. Your brakes on these trucks are mostly for safety. When you're hauling or empty, the engine retarder and driveline retarder will do all the work for you. Let's take a little run down the highway side. Of this thing when we get on the straight stretch. And good turning radius with the 40 ton dump. up you can see the difference in height between a conventional truck and the 69 XD but this is definitely heavy equipment not a regular conventional truck all right Steve had a chance to drive the 6900 XD what do you think of it real nice powerful if you will, just tell them what you thought today at the Ride and Drive Club. It's an amazing experience. I never thought that uh, uh, such a big truck is so easy to drive. 